you may have seen in our last vlog that we flew from Washington DC to Athens. We had a delayed flight coming into Athens so we got here a couple days ago really late and um, we didn't really vlog our time in Athens. We did a couple things here but we didn't go crazy because honestly we were just really feeling the jet lag. But today I'm excited because we kind of came into Athens because it's just like the main hub for flights to come in. But the bulk of our time in Greece is going to be on the islands which is the most beautiful part of Greece. And so today we are finally getting on a ferry and going to our first island of Milos. And Milos is, is kind of more of an underrated island so you've probably heard of Mykonos, probably heard of Santorini but Milos is apparently where the Greeks like to vacation not as much of a touristy place and so I'm super excited I've heard it's actually been rated as like the number one island in the world like last year or something like that and so I'm very very excited but this will be our, also our first ferry experience so ferries are the number one way that people get to and from different islands um, in Greece. So our ferry ride is about four and a half hours. So we're about to jump on and head to Milos. One of the most popular ways to get to the various Greek islands is by ferry. We booked all of our ferry rides with a side called Ferry Hopper, which makes it really easy to search and compare ferry rides for a given day. This saves you from having to go to all of the individual ferry company websites. Instead, you can browse all of them with one search. Depending on which ferry company you choose, your ride will be a different experience. For our ferry to Milos, we took Festos Palace, which is a pretty large boat and has lots of different areas to hang out. There are multiple floors, including decks with open seating and bars, an open upper deck with a pool, a VIP seating section, and even cabins with bedrooms. The downside to this ferry is that there is no assigned seating, and it became clear very quickly that it's a fight to get a seat because of that. We finally found a table and chairs on the upper deck, luckily, but I even saw people sitting on the floor during the ride because they couldn't find a seat. So if having your own assigned seat is important to you, I would suggest not booking a ferry with open seating like this. I feel like that ferry ride actually kind of flew by. Yeah, I didn't think it was bad for four, four and a half hours. That was our hours. longest ferry ride. It was like four and a half hours, but it went by pretty fast. Six hour, you know, no. Like, now we're waiting for the elevator. Is there only one elevator? It's deck six is yeah, where we have to yeah. go. Reception, yeah. You go first. So this is all the people waiting to rush out when the doors open. I guess, yeah. I'm surprised they don't want you down. So something I had read about the ferry system in Greece is like that you just that they leave at the time that they're supposed to leave like on the dot and they probably even get a little early like it's a fast moving system like if you are taking the Greek ferry system make sure you are not late to your boat or it will not be there and it seems like um, they kind of like try to rush people off that's why they get everyone down here like waiting at the entrance like standing around so that as soon as they open the door people are getting off and they can get the next people on and be out by the time so it's very like fast efficient system. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping Kati got down there. I know. There we go. We did it. Hey guys, I want to take a quick second to remind you if you haven't seen last week's video, Will and I are giving away a weekend trip to come and hang out with us in Las Vegas. We're paying for your flight and your hotel for you and a guest. The way to enter is to click the link down in the description and join our email newsletter. The email newsletter is something that we just launched and Will's gonna be writing weekly emails about what we're currently doing so that you guys can have an inside look at what's going on even before the vlogs come out. So if you're interested in entering that giveaway, it ends on January 15th. So make sure to go to the link in the description, fill out that form to join the giveaway and we hope that we can see you in Las Vegas. We're officially in Milo. Yep, welcome to Milos. It is absolutely beautiful here. It's such like that good combination of just like beautiful blue water, but also kind of the mountain feel and everything. And like the white buildings and the with white the blue buildings, doors and shutters. Already. So I'm excited to they be here. They said this is like the, the water. I've seen so many things that said this is the prettiest Greek island. Yeah. Well, the only bad thing is this is our first Greek island we're going to. Right. So it's going to like set our expectations so yeah. high. Little guppies in the water. Little guppies. Oh, are there? Oh. Oh, there is. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. They probably can't see my camera. Tiny little fishies. Oh the water's really blue. It is. Swim right now. I know. <laughs> it's Let's like gets off ferry, immediately proceeds to dive That's in. That's why that girl wore a bikini. <laughs> She's like, right. I'm ready. 
Oh, cool. That's actually a big RV for Europe. That's like, yeah, that's that's, that's probably... the style that's popular in Europe. But yeah, it's how, a little big. How, how thin it is. Like, well, it is, but usually they're side. even smaller than that. Honestly. Well, I'm sure because the roads in Europe are so they're tight, they tight, make yeah. them, they don't make them real wide. But yeah, that's even long. I mean, that's like kind of a small class C. So we just picked up our rental car. It's a little Hyundai um, and it's actually bigger than they expected or than we originally reserved. And so um, I'm glad that we got that because it's small as it is. Right, like even this is gonna be tough. <laughs> yeah, but it is a manual, which is really common. Um, so Jen's gonna try to learn manual, right? Yeah, I wanna learn how to drive a stick shift in Milos. Yeah. So I would say not every island, um, it's like, recommended to get a rental car. Milos was one of the ones they did recommend. But yeah. I think there is a bus service. Oh, but but I don't know if it just if it doesn't go everywhere you want it to go. Now there also are some places on the island that you can only get to with a four by four. But we're doing a bus tour on in a couple days and yeah. all of those places you can only hit with a four by four on the coastline. We're going to those on the boat tour. Yep. So it wasn't worth the price to upgrade to a four x four. Right, and yeah, the four x four is really expensive. It was like $300 more for the yeah. three day rental, yeah. so. fun fact that we learned when we were in Athens. This is a gyro, um, which is the correct way of saying it, not like the American gyro version, which Kati loves. <laughs> <laughs> Kati hates it when you say gyro, by the way. In Greek, or in Greece, gyro is um, chicken and, what was it, pork combination, right? Which in America, we're used to it being um, lamb. Well, we found out that the lamb and beef combo version is actually the Turkish version. So Turkey and Greece are very, very close. Um, so, you know, I think it kind of got like mingled and Greece was owned by Turkey previously. So there's a lot of Turkish influence in it. But today here in Crete, they actually did have the Turkish version. So that's what I'm trying. And they serve it different. It's not wrapped up like normal. I mean, sometimes it is. Um, but here it's not, so I'm just eating it like this. Is it good? It's actually very good. Guys, I love this Airbnb so much. I'm so glad that we booked it. Truthfully, it was like the only Airbnb because we do everything so last minute, right? So it was the only Airbnb that was available that was within our price range. Um, so we just hopped on it right away. But I really feel like I would have picked this even if I had a hundred options. So then behind you guys, which is really our view, is like a little park and just the most beautiful, like grease picturesque uh, view that you've ever seen. Then coming over here on the outside, nice cute little outside shower right there. Um, little counter space. I love this little like outside oven. I don't know if we're gonna cook in it, but I feel like we should do like a fire or something. What do you think, Katsy? I wish I could make pizzas in yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Like I so, I just wanna make a pizza and they're so yes. bad. <laughs> More counter space. Everything in here is just like so new and clean looking. Seating area with the pergola. 
And this is actually really nice because the weather out here is perfect. And on the inside, there's really not like a hangout space. So I feel like we'll be out here a lot and um, just enjoying the sunset and the view and hanging out. Inside, there really isn't much of a living space. This is gonna be Kati's bed here. <laughs> and um, it's kind of like doubles up as a couch as well. It's meant for a kid, but we're gonna make yeah. it work. And then in here in the kitchen, it's actually a really good sized kitchen. And again, I just love the interior in here. The colors are good, but then it's like all the Finishing touches like the light, the beams in the ceiling, um, and then this like natural rock that they like just built into the house. It's I'm obsessed with the fridge. I know. <laughs> it's so cute. It really is. Oh, and they left us fresh tomatoes. Butter. Oh, don't um, forget about the empanadas yeah, as our we love to empanadas. Oh. Kati, why don't you try one for everybody? Okay. What kind are they? Is it chicken? You can't see? Let me see. No, no, it's like really different oh that is yeah. interesting i, no I don't know what is. that is it's really good though it is okay mm. so a little shower sink toilet and everything i think so, they have a, a little boudet yeah, in there. They do. <laughs> um yeah very simple but again just the little touches and all the colors and everything are perfect it's been a long travel day so mom's mm -hmm. tired yeah i think she's asleep so their headboard is like uh, stone, which is really cute. King bed, which is hard to get in Europe. I think I actually read about it. They put two twin beds together in both the rooms oh, to create okay. a king bed. Cool. Coming into this bedroom, the Jen and I have here is Jen. Hi, Jen. Say hi, Hello, America. <laughs> oh, America. I'm sleepy. I'm sorry. Jen's tired, and she has a bad knee, unfortunately. <laughs> so. But they give us these blankets. So. Yeah, these blankets are so nice. Mm -hmm. There's like two or no three of them hanging up in here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful bedroom again. Just like all the touches. What do you have to say about this place, Jen? So I love that it has like the Greek feel. Right. Yes. Like, it's got like the wood ceiling and like the raw like kind of live edge beams. Yeah. The white walls, like it just feels very Greece. Yep, it mm -hmm. does. It really it's like does. An experience. Mm-hmm. Okay. Coming into the back room. Again, it's a small bathroom, but you know, it's all kind of the same as the last one, except I love this rock shelf. I think that's so cool. Mm -hmm. We found this stray little cat. And she's so cute. I'm inside. He needs a home. But mom's asleep. Mom's asleep. We're gonna see if mom. Dad probably doesn't want him on the bed, do you, Dad? No. Oh. oh my god! I'm naming him Neo. at Tigrado Beach which is down on the southern side of the island and the cool thing about this beach is that you actually have to go down a ladder on the side of a cliff to get to the beach so it's a little bit of a physical challenge hopefully we'll all make it down I don't think it's like a great beach to sit on but it's just kind of like cool to get down there so hopefully we'll all make it down the ladder and we can go for a swim I have fallen and I can't get it up. Oh, it actually looks like a strong ladder. Like it doesn't look all rickety when you look down. Mm -hmm. you want me to test it? <laughs> test it? We're good. This is actually a really, really nice ladder. Is it? Yeah. Good crap on it. Good? Yep. Okay. Okay, I don't think that's I mean, the only spot. Guys. I should have worn tennis shoes. Okay, careful. Yeah, get your foot a little further down. There you go. He did it! We did it! It's a bad news. Uh, I think there's another ladder. Oh, Jenny. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. So I think the key, because I'm like worried about sliding on a lot of this with my knee. 
But there's so much sand that it's almost like if you bury your foot in, even if you do slide, it's okay because you just kind of like slow. Oh yeah, good point. So that's what I've been doing because what you don't want is to like put your foot on a rock and like slide right. and then like jerk your knee or something. But it's a very small beach. There's a lot of people here, which is why they say you should, if you can, come here really early in the morning because it's before like a lot of people get down here, so you have a little bit more space on the beach. But again, it's not like a beach you come and like hang out on for a while. It's more just like the thrill of getting down here, the more secl secluded beach. That's so beautiful here, honestly. It's like the water's so super cool. clear. How is the how is the ladder? Um, so I didn't realize that there's two ladders. So when we did the first ladder, I was like, oh, we're good. That wasn't too bad. But then you go down in between like two cliffs. And honestly, that was almost the hardest part it because was. you're just like on very like unstable ground. And there was like a spot that was like really just slick, like nothing to grab onto. Mm -hmm. And then the second ladder is a little tough because you almost have, there's a rope there and you almost have to like go over the side before you can really like, like you can't really like see the ladder until you like get over the side and it's like long steps down but i think it'll be easier going up because yeah. you can like see where you're going you know mm -hmm. yeah, we're just gonna swim for a while now Woo. there's like a lot these well number one the water is like so clear and blue oh yeah these big rocks i don't know the if water. they can see it i think they can like the, the pictures you see of like tahoe this reminds me a lot of it but then there's also caves so there's one over there and there's one over here that we actually went into. They don't go back too far. But there are other caves on the island that we're going to explore tomorrow on our boat tour. Um, yeah, this spot's really cool. Well, this is such a cool spot. I love it here. It's just so, like, picturesque and beautiful. And, I know. I mean, I don't know. And it's just also so cool, just like our first time. I, th <laughs> I think this is the Aegean Sea, if that's how you say it. Um, yeah. So it's like our first time swimming. I mean, it's our first time swimming anywhere in, like, Europe, like, know. you know. Okay, we made it down. Are we gonna make it back up? I don't know. I actually feel like, well, normally I'd be okay with up. I'm worried about my knee because it's hard to right. bend it. So we'll see. But at least you can see where you're going. That's the key. It is, yeah. Take your time. Oh. You get to slide. We're now at a stop called Papa Fragas Caves, and there's now. actually a beach down below. So right, right over here, there's like some caves, and there's kind of like a cliff that goes down to this little canal of water that comes in. There's a small beach at the bottom, and we're trying to figure out how to get down to that beach, but it's a little confusing because Hati went in the caves and you couldn't get down. And the only way I've seen where people go down is to go through a gate that basically has a lock that says keep out. I guess it's not locked and some people are going. But it's weird because like I saw all these reviews on Google of people like going down to the beach. So I'm like, is there an easier way that we're just missing? Keep going. I don't know. So it's kind of sketchy because this walkway going to the caves, like you just slip and it's a straight plunge. I mean, I think you would die. But we will press on. I feel like cavemen lived here. It's a nice little shelter. They have like a fire going. And here you can see the beach way down there. Those people right there. But we can't figure out how to get down there. It's a little confusing. Here's another little cave. Oh, so that's it actually. So it's like two caves here. But there are some like caves down at the beach and like some on the side of the cliff. But you can only access two here. But look at that drop. It's crazy. I would suggest you just don't carry anything if you want to hold on. And you just take your shoes off so you don't slide. But you did find a Is it just that, through that gate? Yeah, there's, there's a little spot right next to the gate where you just slide through. Alright, Kadi's finishing this alone because I saw that curve there and how there's like nothing. 
and I'm not doing that. So this is the secret cave place. As you can see, there's a little way out into the ocean right there. And you can see some people up there. So there's like small caves in there that you can kind of just look into. And it actually tricks you because it looks like a way here, but it's not. Can you see all this? We finished our island tour at Sara Canico Beach, a stop on the north side of the island with gorgeous white volcanic rock that's been molded into amazing shapes by the waves. The locals actually refer to Sara Canico as lunar because of how much it resembles the landscape of the moon. Vamanos! <laughs> Vamanos, buddy! <laughs>